Hello and welcome back to my studio. It's Lois here from Lois and Morgana Davidson Art and today I'm going to be showing you how I painted this very loose impressionistic forest scene. I tried to keep it really loose, just the suggestions of detail and mostly using large brushes um, to create this very loose scene. I've used a little bit of salt in the foreground as well to create the impression of just a tangle of plants in the foreground, bracken, brambles, ferns, that sort of thing. The first thing that I'm going to do is just very lightly sketch out the position of the stream and a few trees on either side. Just some scribbly marks that will give me a bit of a road map when I come to put in the loose brushwork. So in this studio vlog, I'll be trying to see how loose I can keep this while still being able to suggest the scene that I want to show. So it's going to be a semi-abstract scene and I'm going to start off by experimenting um, wet in wet. So I'm going to wet the centre because I want to centre the light in the middle of the painting and then just spray around the edge with a water mister. If you look carefully at the paper you can see there's still some dry areas of paper and as I drop in my wet washes where um, the paint will resist going into the dry areas or I'll get a harder edge. Um, where the paint goes into the wet areas I'll get softer edges and diffusion. I'm going to be using cobalt blue, ultramarine, sap green, cad yellow, uh, raw sienna, probably some burnt umber, maybe a bit of hooker's green, maybe a bit of Payne's grey for darks. But I'm just going to work around my penciled in roadmap um, with large brushes, just trying to build up an impression of the scene. Now that I've got a variety of greens and browns and ochres and some blues on the page in the position of where I want them, so in other words, to suggest the sky between the trees, the foliage and the shadows and the ground plane, um, I'm using my palette knife to scrape through the rich paint and this reveals the white of the paper or the paint below and this will start off the impression of my birch trees. Notice that I left the pool area dry and unpainted and I've now begun to just lightly 
paint in some blue so that the sky colour is reflected in the pool using these simple horizontal brush strokes and my three quarter inch flat brush, leaving some of the white paper still showing. And these um, harder edged marks and the horizontal directionality of them contrast against the random softly diffused canopies and ground plane and the strong verticals that I scraped in. Just a few more verticals using the rigger that will, again, just softly diffuse into the background. And now using a slightly drier mix, in other words, less water. So I've dabbed my brush out on a paper towel to remove any excess moisture. I'm going to build up the darks and then just make some small adjustments here and there to the scene. Now that I've got my water in, just to try and begin to bring the scene to life and to get the values right. I could leave it like this and let it dry, but just before it does, I've decided to sprinkle a little bit of fine ground table salt into the foreground, hoping that it will um, create some little blooms that will give me the impressions of ferns, brambles and undergrowth. Once I've sprinkled the salt into the damp paint, I'll use the tip of the palette knife just to create some um, leaves, um, stems and twigs, that sort of thing, but leading up into the areas that I've sprinkled with salt. And hopefully this will help to reinforce the illusion of a foreground of a tangle of weeds and brambles, etc. I now need to leave it to dry completely. So here's the dry washes so far, and I'm really pleased with the way it looks. The next thing I'm going to do is um, just emphasise my birch trees a little more. So I'm going to use my rigger brush and um, a dark mix from um, my blue mixture with a bit of Payne's Grey and a bit of burnt umber added to it. And I'm just going to put a few marks here and there to strengthen up the trees, leaving gaps so that that suggests the paler parts of the birch bark on the trunks and branches. So literally just putting in a few marks here and there, but I'm taking my time to make sure that I build these trees up, trying to get the value right and just enough hard edged detail against all this soft diffusion to kind of bring this impressionistic scene to life. Then using a small synthetic um, round quill brush just to uh, bring in a bit of detail along the riverbank and then continuing with some darker tones 
on the trunks of the trees. And I'm happy with that, I think, for this experiment. So I'm just going to check how it looks. Removing the tape always helps me to see it more as a completed picture rather than with all the sort of messy brush strokes that go over the tape. And now it's more contained with its clean white border, I'm hoping that it carries the illusion that I, that I wanted it to. I mean, it's not perfect, but as far as experiments go, I'm really pleased. I think it's fairly fresh. Just a couple of minor adjustments to the tones of those tree trunks with the rigger brush and my dark mixture. I'm fairly pleased with the sort of illusion of this sort of soft, misty, quite ethereal woodland scene. Um, I like the fact I've been able to keep the light centered in the middle um, which was what I wanted to do. The salt effects have created some really lovely suggested foreground um, overgrown weeds and brambles etc. Um, I think I might have forgotten to say the paper, in which case I'll say it again. It's Saunders Waterford cold press watercolour paper. It was taped to my board and my board was at an angle of about sort of 20 to 30 degrees. Well, thank you so much for watching. I hope that was helpful. Uh, please leave us a like and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. And thank you so much to everybody that supports us on Patreon. Uh, we really do appreciate you and we couldn't run the channel without you. I'll see you again soon. Take care and happy painting. Bye.